All right, so to solve this practice MCAT physics question, uh, we want to use the strategy that I typically recommend, which is to write out the variables that you have, the, the known variables, and then write out the variable that you want to figure out. And then once you've done that, you can figure out relatively easily, uh, as long as you've memorized them, you can figure out what equation you need to use to figure out your unknown variable. So to do that here, let's see, we've got a height of 150 meters, right? So we're dropping an object from a height of 150 meters. So distance is going to be equal to 150 meters, right? When we see something like this, we can already tell we're dealing with like those uh, distance and acceleration equations. So we should already have a good idea in general of what types of variables we're going to be looking for, right? So initial, initial velocity, of course, is going to be zero, but that's not, so because it's zero, it's not really going to end up being relevant. Um, and then what else do we know? We, we know acceleration. And that one's not as obvious, but of course we've got an object falling, right? And if we've got an object falling, then it's accelerating due to gravity, and that's always 10 meters per second squared, right? Meters per second squared, right? Again, on the MCAT, we round that to 10, right? Now, so we've got distance, we've got initial velocity, we've got acceleration, and what do we need? We need how long, that's time, right? So time equals question mark, right? That's T. So these are the variables that we have, and then this is the variable that we need. And uh, so, of course, the equation that we can use for that is distance is equal to one-half a t squared, right? And then plus v initial times t, but of course v initial times t is going to be, the, the whole value is going to be zero because v initial is zero, so we can eliminate that part of the equation, and this is what we're dealing with. And at this point, it's relatively straightforward. At this point, we just kind of got to plug and chug. So distance, 150, is equal to one-half 10 t squared, and uh, 150 divided by half, that's the same thing as multiplying it by 2, and that's 300, and then uh, divided by 10, so divided by 10, that is 30. So I did that in one step, and I would recommend you try and do these sorts of things in one step, because it'll make you faster at uh, getting the math right, and then uh, you'll have more time for some of the harder questions on the MCAT. So now it's 30 equals t squared, and so now we got to do the square root of 30, Right, to get the answer. And of course, the square root of 30 is not a clean number, it's not a clean answer, but we know that it's going to be anywhere between the square root of 25 and the square root of 36, right? So anywhere between, uh, so it's square root of 25 is equal to 5, and then square root of 36 is equal to 6, so between 5 and 6, right? And so the correct answer is going to be somewhere between 5 and 6, and uh, of course of these uh, answer choices in the multiple choice, the only one that is could be correct is B. Right, so B, the answer is 5.53 seconds, right? And so, therefore, that's how we figure out the correct answer without necessarily knowing uh, the square root of 30, right? And so I recommend, again, this method of plug and chug. Uh, with this method, what you really have to be able to do is you have to be able to find the variables within the problem, right? And this is, obviously, it's fairly easy here, but on the MCAT, it's a little bit harder because MCAT's passages are longer, but at the end of the day, the process is the same. You, uh, you have a pretty good idea of what variables you might be looking for, you find the variables, then you remember the equation that you got to use, and then you plug and chug and you get the correct answer, right? So the correct answer here is B, 5.53 seconds.